welcome to the African Utility Week studio. My name is Amy Ryan and today I have with me Julian Green from Oracle. Welcome Julian. Thank you very much Amy, it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you for joining us today. Um, now Julian, we were chatting a bit earlier around um, your presentation that we'll be giving uh, to some of the attendees here at the show. Um, can you tell me more about what your main discussion points will be about? Yeah, so Amy, what we're um, seeing and what we're talking about uh, later on today is how do we really start to bring the customer into the energy value chain and engage them a lot more? How do we make the right thing, the easiest thing for that customer to do. And what I'm going to be talking about is how you can leverage some of those technologies that are now available and perhaps be more widely used in other eight industries in the utility context to, uh, to basically um, uh, deliver better service and ultimately, hopefully by that, deliver better revenue return uh, from the customer base. Okay. Now, in a time where consumers are gaining increasing control over the energy use, they're becoming more involved in how they use energy, what energy they use. Um, what are some of the technologies and platforms um, available to utilities to be able to create maybe some more tailored or personalized services for their customers? Yeah, that's a great question. And we're actually seeing many technologies emerge because the relationship with the consumer is, is one that's really changing. Mm -hmm. and. You know, obviously that's going to be affected by different dynamics. Um, obviously we've got things like people uh, becoming a producer of energy as well as a consumer. And so we really need to understand that customer a lot better. We need to be able to profile them more, to be able to segment the types of products and services that we offer. And so, you know, there's a lot of analytics and profiling uh, technologies that uh, you know Oracle provides, and indeed other service uh, 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 IT solution providers uh, uh, can produce. That uh, allows you to understand better that customer, yeah. to be able to segment them, and then you can target them much better with the types of services that you want to uh, promote. And. Um, you know, we've seen some real wins with uh, some of our customers around the world on just encouragement, using behavioral science to actually encourage the consumer to do the right thing. And I think we're going to see a lot more of that in the industry uh, in general. Okay. Um, and then what growth do you foresee with regards to these uh, technologies that you've mentioned, uh, specifically within the African market? So, you know, obviously, uh, a lot of the utilities are very constrained in terms of the amount of resources that they have available to invest. And I think, you know, this is not a, we're not talking a revolution here. There are things that you can do that are quite simple and perhaps um, collect maybe a little bit of additional information, basically perhaps start to look at information in a broader uh, uh, spectrum rather than maybe just looking at information in relation to uh, you know how I might want to build a customer and you can get some real business benefits from that by actually starting to manage information more strategically and then employ some basic techniques you know some basic segmentation techniques be able to for example offer the customer flexible ways to pay be it from prepayment all the way through to, you know, pay by PayPal or, or, or some of the more, uh, uh, um, you know, internet-based type yeah. payments. I think the other thing that we're seeing as well is be able to offer to the customer, um, you know, a multitude of communication options. Yeah. You know, uh, people like to communicate in different yeah. ways. It makes them feel more comfortable. Yeah. And so you need to be able to support that with your um, with your service provision, um, I think um, essentially, you know, simple things: be able to offer the customer flexible days on which to pay, be able to um, uh, understand through segmentation, you know, the demographics of the customer, be able to identify, um, you know, are they customers who potentially may be in. Um, you know, uh, uh, energy poverty, yeah. you know, are they people who ultimately choose not to pay but could? And you may want to react to those people in different ways and make sure that, you know, if there are assistance programs, for example, that 
you know, you identify who those customers are that are most likely to react to those assistance, progr assistance programs and then basically um, target, target that. And I think that's also true with things like demand response yeah. and also, you know, as people start to adopt more in Africa, um, you know, maybe installing a renewable generation, be it solar, for maybe small uh, farms and things like that, maybe they put a wind turbine in. Be able to provide them with a mechanism to help them in that with that investment because ultimately it helps the utility, yeah. and be able to actually view that as a new business model, a new business revenue stream because there's maintenance, there's service, and so on. Okay. And then by using that technology that you've mentioned, um, how can utilities ensure that each business function is prepared um, with the right information and tools toward creating a customer-centric model? So that's a very good question and I think, you know, my experience working with clients both here in Africa but also this is actually a, 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 an industry-wide yeah. uh, uh, challenge and that is that, you know, actually we're probably very surprised by the amount of information that we hold. Um, you know, within the utility company. The problem at the moment is that a lot of that information is held for a very specific purpose and, and generally, you know, very targeted or siloed. And I think what we need to start to do is to really look at our industry and look at how things are changing. And as a utility, we really need to think about how we manage information end-to-end -end across the enterprise because actually there's huge value that can be had from from you know information that's collected meter reading for example um, you know we think about it from a uh, we you know consumption of service to produce a bill to 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 bring revenue in but in actual fact that data is also telling you how people are actually consuming yeah. energy or water in a particular area and by using that data and aggregating that data you can actually start to use that in terms of how you're maintaining assets and how the infrastructure is being used and loaded and so you can actually tune and optimize cost around that and so um, I think the real challenge is we as an industry need to uh, appreciate that as we go through this evolution revolution whatever you want to call it information management and how you process the data that you're receiving uh, is a critical component of, of how we adapt and change the business. I think that, that the key word that you just mentioned, information management, will be a critical um, task for any utility kind of with uh, integrating so many different technologies, renewables. It's, 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 you can have all the technology, but it's about what you do with that data. Couldn't agree more. And you know, one of the things that sometimes we fail to think about is the people change. Yeah. And that's that's you know, as we as we're able to collect more information and we're able to use it in different ways, we need to be mindful that we need to take the people on the journey with us. Yeah. And that actually is as important for employees as it is our customers. And that's basically achieved through information sharing and education and you know there's lots of ways that we can do that and in fact here in Cape Town um, you know there's a, a program they've got a, a situation here with uh, water shortage at the moment and um, you know I was watching the TV last night I saw a very comprehensive um, education program being screened out on the major channels that was educating people into the fact that you know we need to appreciate there is a shortage we need to be mindful of how we consume the product in this time of shortage. And, and it's just simple things. It doesn't have yeah. to be, yeah. um, you know, an extensive, expensive program. With regards to um, data being siloed, uh, like you mentioned earlier, um, do you think communication is, well, not being used effectively by utilities? Um, just in terms of um, creating that synchronization between different utility departments to um, perhaps yeah. get... Yeah. I think, you know, I can give you quite a few uh, <laughs> illustrations of where that is absolutely the case. And, and you know, um, 
here in Africa, um, the utilities are still vertically integrated predominantly. You know, that's further complicated in some markets through the fact that, you know, uh, service has been unbundled. Um, we've now actually got separate, you know, uh, pipes and wire companies from, from companies actually uh, dealing with the billing and, the, and the, the management of the customer. But yes, the sharing of information across departments is uh, a challenge for the industry as a whole. Um, I think some utilities are better than others at that. But I think certainly it's something that we need to kind of um, uh, break down some of those barriers. Yeah. And I think, you know, there is a role to play for, for uh, IT departments in being able to do this, you know. IT departments are providing a service to the business. And so, you know, by really understanding that um, uh, um, uh, information architecture that's available and the types of information that's being collected you know, across the enterprise, they can, you know, very much help to break down some of these kind of operational barriers, if you like. I can throw you an example, you know, just in, in asset management alone. Um, I was working with a client recently and there was a complete disconnect from um, new uh, capital works and maintenance. So it was a case of you know, yeah. procure assets which are really cheap, yeah. we can do more, we can build more, great. What they weren't mindful of is what the impact of that is in terms of maintenance. And, you know, unfortunately, they're now coming to the conclusion that actually, maybe we perhaps invested in some of the wrong equipment, and that's now having a, a drain on our operational budget. Again, you know, analysis across yeah those silos, how much did we spend, how much did it cost for us to do that construction, contrasting that with how much we're paying to maintain, you can start to see those types of visualizations. Yeah. And you know, that doesn't require whole scale system transformation. It's about how do you take the information, how do you put it into a common business intelligence environment, for example, to be able to do some of those types of analysis. Julian, in your opinion, how can enhanced customer service improve revenue collection? Do you think? So, this is a this is a, a good question, and and actually this is a question, you know, that that's very relevant here, but it's actually very relevant uh, across the industry. And and good customer, if somebody is receiving good service, you're more inclined to pay for it. It's like yeah. you go into a restaurant, you get a good meal, you're more inclined to tip. And so we have to be making sure that what we do is very accurate, it's always right, we're able to make it easy for the customer to do the right thing. And I think that's the, that's the thing that um, I think is really important, we've got to make it easy. I think um, as we spoke about segmentation, understanding the consumer, understanding their relationship with you. Uh, and that's not just how much they spend with you, but really understanding, you know, what their demographic situation is, where they live, how they're supplied, because that's very important. We need to take the consumer and we need to connect them to the grid and understand what is the actual um, uh, uh, relevance of all of our uh, asset investments in supplying service to that consumer so that we can actually make sure that the service we provide is um, uh, as good as we can possibly make it. And I think the other thing is communication. We need to be able to communicate with the customer in the way that they want to receive communication with timely and accurate information. You know, if there is going to be a power outage, we need to be able to communicate that to the customer, give them time to prepare. In some cases, we we can't do that because it's an unplanned event, but at least notify them so that they know that this is the situation, give them some idea of when we're going to restore supply. Those types of things encourage the customer, uh, give the customer confidence that actually we're on top of our game, we're doing the right thing, and so it will help them to actually be more inclined to um, uh, to do the right thing on our behalf. And as I said before, I think you know we've got to make it easy. So we need to be able to offer flexible mechanisms to pay. We need to be offer be able to offer them the types of service that is relevant for for, for them and their daily lives. You know, and of course in this continent, prepayment, 
is a very important aspect of that uh, and being able to make and support that business as usual and understand even though you know the customer may be a pay-as-you-go customer we still need to know the customer we still need to collect the information that's relevant in terms of that consumer and and how they're going to uh, consume service from us and interact with the utility well Julian thank you so much for sharing your insight with us I think this is um, you made some very valuable points on, on how to engage with the consumer and um, what technologies are key uh, to help you do that. Um, thank you very much for watching.